So we've been working on this website that we built in WordPress and I've given you, I, I believe, enough of the tools for you to, to try it on your own. The next steps are for you to work on the site in WAMP or MAMP or on a real server, you know, put it out there for real. But then we get to the issue that success, well, I should say website, plus SEO equals success. You have a great website, but it doesn't get any traffic. Uh, people don't know about it. So that's where SEO comes in. So well-designed site with what people want, plus search engine optimization, which is uh, on page SEO, which is off site SEO, such as social media and blogging. And that's success, which is traffic, which maybe that's not full success. What would be full success? The full successful result of a website, maybe I'm trying to sell something. I've built this e-commerce site because I'm trying to sell something. So that would be the most success. Sales, leads, calls, bookings, whatever your website is about, whatever you're trying to do, that is the ultimate uh, success. And you won't get to that without these other pieces. So SEO, let's say modern SEO. If you take the longer SEO class, I go into a lot of these details. Uh, so maybe there's a couple of concepts missing here or there. That's what the whole class, the longer class is for. But modern SEO, because this changes. Um, websites have been around more than 25 years. Uh, the internet has been around longer since the 60s. But websites, the language, the code that makes a website has been around since 1989. And we see how literally the world has changed with that technology, that code. Websites, we do our banking online, we connect with friends and family online, we sell products online. So things change throughout the years. It used to be easy in the old days see a classic SEO like yahoo.com indexes your site based on simple keywords people find it and click your site so in the old days it was simple keywords my website is a bakery Victor's Bakery. So I would want the keyword bakery all over my site, on the home page, on the about page, on the products, on the address, victorsbakery.com. That was the old way. Simple keywords on our sites. Well, things have changed because that worked in the old days for us, the good guys, but it also worked for the bad guys, the spammers. It worked for these companies that are trying to rip you off uh, using basic keywords. So the modern way to do it, it's, it's constantly changing to various degrees. It's a moving target. SEO, that techniques of SEO that worked two years ago, five years ago, they might not work the same anymore because they've been abused. The search engines have to change the techniques. So modern SEO is focus on content. Uh, Google now the search engine in the old days it was Yahoo now it's Google or Bing focus on content what is on your site what what is it about but what what's on the site what's the what's the content what are you trying to sell and promote how do you write the content what content do you create I'll give you some handouts and such in a moment to 
kind of guide you on that. Focus on content, so on your site, blogs, off your site, social media. Blogs, basically articles on content people want to find. When we were first learning the ideas of WordPress, we played a little bit with creating posts, remember? Posts in WordPress are blogs, articles. Back then, we didn't spend too much time on it, but I had said that these are articles, these are things that people want to find. So if I'm a bakery, I would want to write articles of what people are searching about. So bakery example blogs such as uh, top five sugar alternatives or the best chocolate chip cookie recipe what else if you were searching for baking information online what might you search for any any ideas fresh. what's that fresh just the word fresh, you're gonna to to you're gonna to go to Google and type fresh? No. Fresh bakery natural ingredients. Okay, very good. So uh, fresh bakery fresh bakery with natural ingredients. You're probably gonna search for something a little more detailed like this. That could be an article, perhaps. I heard something else also. Low calorie. Low calorie. Low calorie what? Cakes, cookies, so in detail, low calorie, low calorie sweets. So these are keywords that people might use to search for. Uh, in the old days, again, simply the keyword bakery might have been enough to get me found. Someone went to yahoo.com and typed bakery, and my bakery might have appeared. Well, there would be more than one bakery. Maybe I'm in San Diego, and I would type Bakery San Diego. The person would type, you know, Chula Vista Bakery in the old days. But now we need to be more specific because you've seen it yourself. If you type a simple keyword, you get a page of a million results and not exactly what you're looking for. You have to be a little bit more specific, and when you're a little more specific, you might get a better result. So this is what I'm getting at here. These might be search terms that people plug into the search engine to find what they're looking for. And if we have blogs, articles, pages on our site, content on our site with what people search for, they might find us. So I'll give you a handout in just a moment about that. Let me contrast that over here, off your site, social media. So what are some examples of social networks you've heard of? You might have heard of this little website called Facebook.com. Any others? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Twitter. Instagram. On and on. There's lots of them. Snapchat. Uh, there's ones all over the world. You know, there's an audiences. There's social networks in other parts of the world that you've never used because they're targeting that part of the world. Um, like uh, V Contact, that one is very popular, I believe, in Russia. There's also uh, Sina Weibo, that one's popular in uh, China. So there's different social networks. There's QQ. QQ is popular in um, Japan, I believe. So there's these different networks that are popular in different parts of the world. Facebook is the most popular network in the world. It's the number one most traffic website in the world. But there's still other ones that are that are big. So there's all of these social media networks. So people say, well, there's too many of them. Which one's the good one? Which one should I focus on? The short answer is Facebook, but the longer answer is the one where your audience is at. So if I'm already on Facebook, maybe what's the point of LinkedIn? What, do you, what have you heard about LinkedIn? Why is it valuable? What's the point of it? It's business-based. Business-based or business-focused. It focuses on business connections, professionalism, and such. Um, any comments, uh, opinions? What's in, what's Instagram about? What's its purpose or its goal or whatever? Youth, youth target audience. What's that? 
visual youth, however you define that. What about Twitter? Useless. Useless. I used to like it before the election a lot, but um, we could say here. What's that? Nonsense. Nonsense. Uh, it has that cachet for a long time that this is where I'm going to share what I had for breakfast. But uh, it's a real time. Real time posts, real time updates, real time news. Uh, it's real time. Uh, I see a lot of information coming out faster on, on Twitter than the other networks. Uh, Facebook uh, is uh, admitting that during this past election cycle, it, not that it got hacked, but that it got gamed. Facebook put out a, a report saying that their system got gamed, that there were these fake accounts that were creating content that misled people and all of that. So they have this curation system that sort of failed them. Twitter, on the contrast, is much more open. In theory, anyone could could uh, post anything, and, and it's more open. But Instagram is owned by Facebook, so it has that starting point that people can get into it faster. And uh, it actually now has more people using it than Twitter. Twitter has around 330 million users. Instagram, I think they've crossed about 600 million recently. Uh, Facebook is almost about to be, if not already, 2 billion users. Billion, not million. So LinkedIn, uh, I don't know the stat off the top of my head, but it's somewhere around 100 million to 500 million, something like that. It's a big range, but I don't remember. Twitter is around 330 million. Instagram is about 600 million. Pinterest, um, that one, I believe I've seen that one's at a, a, around 200 million. Now, another difference is Pinterest has seemed to have grown up as being uh, female-friendly or female-focused. Um, the demographics seem to show uh, more women use, use Pinterest than the other networks. So by knowing a little bit of this information, we can try to do this target audience. Uh, there's another one that's there's another one that could be popular or useful, Google Plus. It's one of the ones I cover in the in the class. This one is sort of tech focused. That one also has some sort of big range of some amount of people like that. So hundreds of millions of people are using these networks. The short answer is most people, everyone, is on Facebook. But the problem with that is you're a needle in a haystack. You are on it and so is everyone else, every other business. So in the social media class, I go into more detail about how to use Facebook effectively. These other networks are smaller, comparatively, but they could reach the audience you're looking for a little bit easier. Yes, uh, that's another one there. Uh, I don't know the stat, but I think it's at around 180 million, around there somewhere. What? Snapchat? Snapchat, yep. Snapchat. That one is definitely youth. This one is uh, multimedia youthful audience. Isn't it just, uh, did Facebook come out with a Yes, that's the problem with Snapchat, that it had this sort of uniqueness to it that Facebook has copied, basically, called Stories. Facebook, the, all of these networks are homogenizing, they're all becoming the same now. Everyone had their own sort of uniqueness to it. Uh, Twitter, uh, you know, it's one unique thing still is the limitation of 140 characters. What can you put out to the world in a short message? Facebook, you know, you have no length, no limit, that is, uh, Google Plus, no, no limit. Um, Pinterest and Instagram were very visual, sharing a photo. You could share a video, but it's often for photo. Snapchat is, is now becoming more about multimedia, 
and videos and all that stuff and putting cute icons on your photos and putting a dog filter on your face and all of that. So the, the differentiator was short video, fun stickers, and then they did, they did this thing called stories, which would sort of link each individual picture together. Oh, their other differentiator was that it had self-destructing content. If you tweeted something now, someone could go back to it a year later. Someone could refer to it back a year later to call you a hypocrite. Well, Snapchat is, uh, had self-destructing messages. I share something, my friends see it, it goes away in 24 hours. Nothing embarrassing is left. Then my parents can't see it. You know, that was what the kids were all about. Uh, my parents are on Facebook too, I'm going to go somewhere else, Snapchat. And then so then they put together uh, stories, which is a bunch of small snaps that come into a story and then people can look at it and then it disappears. Facebook basically stole that idea and also called it stories. So one of the reasons why Snapchat is now struggling is because everyone's copied their idea. The little stickers, the filters, the stories, everyone's copying it. And uh, recently Snapchat uh, went public, meaning you can buy stock in Snapchat, buy stock in almost all of these other networks. But Snapchat stock has been suffering because every other network is copying them. Just for fun, let's take a quick look over here. If we look up, for example, Facebook. You can buy shares in Facebook, $151 per share. And in the last five years, the stock has been going up. So if you bought shares of Facebook when it was new, it was $27 per share. And then now it's $151 per share. Uh, Twitter, you can buy shares in Twitter also. Twitter stock has not done well. When this loads up, we'll see. Well, they did well today, but if you look at it in the longer term compared to Facebook, it's the opposite. Twitter has not been able to be as financially viable for investors like Facebook. Facebook is very aggressive in what it does to create a network that everyone wants and advertisers want to use and people want. Twitter hasn't quite been able to do it, so at one point Twitter stock was worth 60 $69, and today it's worth $18. So that one hasn't worked out. LinkedIn, um, it's not going to show it here. LinkedIn was an independent company, but eventually then it got bought by Microsoft. So now Microsoft owns LinkedIn, and its shares were at about $200 per share, and then Microsoft bought it for a few billion dollars. And now LinkedIn is part of Microsoft. Snapchat recently went public, meaning you can buy shares. And today that's what it did. But if we look at it, it's less than a year old. Um, high of 27, dipped all the way down after their earnings report. Basically, they were they went public, people bought shares and such. They had a report, they had their first quarterly report recently, and they said. We're not getting as many users as we thought we, we were going to get. We're, we're slowing down growth. Facebook is stealing our ideas. And then the stock price crashed. So it may come back. And my friend was telling me before the IPO, she was saying, I can't wait to buy that Snapchat stock. I said, like, don't buy Snapchat. It's not going to work out. Everyone, it's, it's like I personally, uh, for myself, and I think I'm pretty techie, I don't fully get Snapchat either. I think also I might be out of the target demographic. And uh, besides teaching these classes, I've said I'm part of a company that we make websites, but we do social media for businesses. We do Facebook. We run their Facebook. We run their blog. We run their Twitter. We've uh, not done a lot of Snapchat for companies yet because, again, I don't feel, and the other people on my team don't quite feel that we can do Snapchat effectively for a company. And still it feels like, well, you know, this audience, this short attention span audience putting content all the time it disappears you can't cut you can't track metrics you don't know what's effective and like uh, it's difficult I think for a legitimate company to use snapchat at the moment yeah. 
and uh, price-wise, you know, she was saying, yeah, but it's a growth company. You know, the price, you buy low, you sell high. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't think still they've got enough of a product that it's really going to sustain. So she said, well, I'm just going to sell some of my Apple stock and trade it in for some of my Snapchat stock. I said, I don't know. You shouldn't do it. I think she did. She said, I only bought 100 shares. That was like, you know, $2,000. But uh, we'll see. You know, if she bought here, great. But, you know, she bought over here. She's lost a little money so far. She bought there. She didn't buy on the first day, definitely. But um, she buys at some point. You know, it goes both ways. I bought Twitter stock when it was $40 a share. And now it's 18 or something. So I lost some money on, yeah. I bought when it was like $45 a share. That's $18. But you, know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but all of these networks now, they are part of a modern website. In the old days, it was, what, uh, what's, uh, what's your website? Nowadays, it's, what's your Facebook? What's your Twitter? What's your Snapchat? All of that. So a modern website has to really also incorporate social media. The trick is which one. So, modern online presence, website, plus social media. People always ask, well, what's the demographic for this one, for that one? And there are some that you can classify a little easier, Pinterest, Snapchat, etc. Some not as easy to categorize, but that's why. Uh, the new world of marketing could be so effective. Digital marketing could be more effective than traditional marketing, because what's marketing in the in the in the old days without social media? Billboard, TV ad, flyer on the windshield, that guy flipping that sign around on the corner. That's traditional marketing. This is the new marketing: social media. And yeah, there is that idea of the frivolity of all these social networks, but there is the business aspect as well. Question? That one's interesting because Yelp is like. Um, Yelp is is not quite a social network, but it has some of the features such as commenting and replies and favorites and all of that. But uh, yes, definitely I would include that in the aspects of modern marketing, getting on these review sites and Yelp is the big famous one, but Facebook has reviews. You know, Facebook copies everything, so Facebook reviews. There's also Google reviews. There's these other ones like Angie's List. There's um, Kudzu, Glassdoor. What else is there? Oh, TripAdvisor. So there's all of these possible avenues of marketing. We've spent this time building a website. Again, if it's the most amazing website that has all the best features, it's the question about if your website falls in the middle of the woods, is there anyone around to hear it? They don't hear it, that sort of thing, mixing metaphors. So if no one knows your site exists and don't go to it, you don't make sales. Your website didn't work for you. You have to invest in some marketing. Yelp, I believe, also. You can invest in Yelp. Let's see what they're doing. Pretty affordable, twenty-eight eighty-three, but they were much more valuable a few years ago. Ninety-four dollars per share in twenty fourteen. Why? Because these these new generation of companies compared compared with classic companies to invest in that had a product that was a very sort of necessary tangible product. These are all tech companies that could go belly up if their users are not engaged. If some bad news happens because some other company ripped off their idea, 
you know, who knows what has happened through those dips, but probably there were other people encroaching on their, on their great idea. Yeah? They all seem to kind of define, like MySpace was the big thing and is gone, and they're showing us declines. I used to work for some microsystems, how many of you remember that? So are they all, uh, in terms of the market timeline, will they all decline? I know Facebook's trying not to, but playing everything in sight. Well, it depends on on what network it is. You know, Sun wasn't it wasn't about social media. They had tangible products, right, and software. Right. Yeah. Uh, other yeah. companies that have really flourished, you know, Microsoft and Apple. Uh, you know, Microsoft. They they've been a software company basically their whole time, and now at, it's got their highest stock price ever, seventy dollars per share. So it depends on what the product is. Uh, I believe. Um, uh, What's a big famous financial guy, Warren Buffett? He said, I don't invest in any company that I don't understand what they do. So, you know, okay, I'm going to invest in Colgate because I know they've got consumer products. I'm going to invest in uh, Microsoft because they, they sell software. I, I don't know why to invest in Snapchat. What do they do? What's unique about them that no one else will rip off? But you have to keep looking at the different channels, don't you? Because you could then put all of your eggs in one, uh, like Facebook, which has yeah. grown older and it's. Demographics. Yeah, that's a, that's the interesting thing. Their stock price, just by their stock price, it's a very good and valuable company, and it could continue to be like that. Every few years, there's the Facebook killer, and no one's killed it yet. So we don't know. That's why the short answer, the face, the, the safe bet is is advertise and market on Facebook. That's the safe answer. You might have a really great result in every other network. However, there's a superstar. There's a client that we have that's a superstar on Instagram. She doesn't touch Facebook, but she has her sales and everything from Instagram. So you don't quite know. That's the problem. Yes. I was just saying, you know, even watching LinkedIn and how they evolved and how they figured out um, their premium memberships, their business memberships, the sales. I mean, they really have made tremendous progress in figuring out their little niches, their little, you know, growth costs as well um, as their advertising. So I have so many years and it's quite fascinating by that. I myself have uh, for the purpose of that. Yeah, there's a nice point, though. Oh, it so is. It's interesting to see. So you, it's working for companies that have to initiate mm -hmm. certain connections. So you're going to, because it's honestly a landscape a large organization that you're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. Based on that, uh, digital marketing, good news, bad news, the good news is low price point, low barrier to entry. Uh, the classic marketing, that billboard is not free that airtime is not free. That guy holding the sign, flipping around, hopefully you're paying him at least minimum wage. So the classic marketing is not free. Even flyers you're putting on people's uh, windows. Well, I needed to go to Kinko's and print out 50 of those. Those were not free. Digital marketing has a very low barrier to entry. I can create any of these accounts for free and start using it right now. Bad news is better results via paid versions or aspects of the service. All of the networks nowadays have some paid aspect. If I want to reach more people on Twitter, let's say I've been struggling for six months and I haven't built enough followers and such. To reach more people, I could start investing in paid tweets. I could have my tweet reach more people. Um, Facebook, same thing. There's lots of people that I could reach, two billion, but I'm a needle in a haystack. It, I'm yet another bakery in San Diego on Fifth Avenue. So I've got a lot of competition. Well, if I invest in Facebook paid ads and such, I can reach more people. My content on Facebook will reach the right people if I pay. Another aspect of the good news, low cost to get started. The more you pay, the more you reach. Yes, but you, even with one dollar on Facebook, you can reach people. Right now, I have zero followers on Facebook. If I spend one dollar, I will have at least you know twenty to a hundred people see my content, 
I have zero followers, but I may get a result of 10 new followers by spending one dollar. That's not the same as what you might have heard about, you know, buying followers. Don't do that. You're not going to buy followers. That never works. You're going to invest in the marketing platforms of the networks. Yes? So a question I have, and I don't know if you have the experience with that, is um, I've seen a lot of smaller companies uh, in the tech side, they get, they, they get into the Wall Street Journal, they get onto the shows, they get onto like little, and all of a sudden it just kind of, it just, it's like a domino effect where they have so much publicity, and it's not like they were investing or work because they, they don't have the assets yet to do so, they don't have investors. How does that happen? Like, what's your perspective on that? How is that going down? I've seen these it's, small companies get... It's a case-by-case -case basis, unfortunately, because what the bigger companies are always on the lookout for nowadays is who can we buy to get their technology? You know, we might not have figured out a technology. So they're looking around the landscape of the startups and all of that and figuring out this may be worth us. Let's, let's pay them a pittance of $10 million to buy their technology, their company. That's part of us. So there's that aspect that... Yeah, that, yeah, and investors are like, right? Just that PR bit is fascinating to me where they're on the TV shows, you know? Like, oh, it's a new small business and, you know, it's not, you know, and here's this It's it is about connections and press connections and press releases. They're very they're they're go getters. They're they they understand the promotion aspect. A lot of times, uh, companies you know they're very tech focused. Well, we just got to create our product, but no, you also have to do the marketing. You have to do the legwork. Call people up or go in person. Do networking and behind the scenes, something had happened. It didn't really fall in their lap. I'm sure they've been out there doing networking events or mixers and all of that and trying to hobnob and then they get a spot uh, on the morning talk show and someone says they've got a product I need let me invest or let me buy you out and so it's a case-by-case -case basis but it's really about marketing and getting exposure and it does feed into itself one of our clients that 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 uh, that restaurant that I mentioned you know uh, they uh, they got a big break in 2012 when they were featured on on the cooking channel they had one of those traveling chefs that visits all over the US came and did one one episode on them and that really has been their domino effect that now they're opening they've got a new location in LA and they're gonna go to Las Vegas eventually and it's just it's just the one spark of marketing that'll really pay off so all of these uh, networks could be valuable it is a lot more extra work. That's why this is all part of the social media management job that you may hire someone to do or do yourself. Take my class, learn these concepts, and do it yourself as much as you can. Social media part one, part two, part three. I'm going to cover a lot of these networks, a lot of these concepts, digital marketing. So the... Um, The thing that I would lead you toward is, is this really great website. We'll check it out right now called socialmediaexaminer.com. It's one of these industry, you know, trade journals of social media. Let's go check it out a moment. This is constantly updated every day new articles on all the social networks, ideas and advice on what to do on Facebook. Uh, have you heard of this network? Here's an idea of what to do if you're a bakery on that network. Let's check that out, socialmediaexaminer.com. They have also their marketing, their social media marketing industry report. 49 pages free, you just give them your email, you get that report. It's a little expensive. It's a little expensive. I'd like to, but it's a little expensive. It's a you know, $200 discount. It's like a $799 ticket. So they do have these conferences here in San Diego where you 
meet all the industry professionals of social media. And, um, you know, people are always clamoring for San Diego Comic Con tickets. This is the one here that uh, could be more valuable. So what do we have? Learn uh, how to engage prospects in LinkedIn, a five-step plan for better leads. We've got the Facebook algorithm demystified how to optimize for newsfeed exposure. So there's industry reports, what you need to know about Facebook mobile video. So here's another, here's another example of video. You know, YouTube is the big name in video. Facebook said, well, we want a piece of that pie. So they started to have more of a features of video on Facebook. Now, it kinda, they got, kinda got egg on their face for a little bit because they revealed recently that all of the great statistics that they were putting out about their Facebook videos were a little exaggerated. They were saying, you know, people are gonna get great results from their videos, but when the real data came out, it was exaggerated. Now, not a lot of people know about that or have moved on because of the speed of life. But again, full disclosure, whenever I talk about Facebook, I sound pretty negative because I don't like Facebook. I uh, personally don't like to use Facebook, but for business, it is definitely valuable. So for clients, you know, I, I personally almost never log into Facebook. My friends and family are always there and say, why didn't you like my photo? And I hardly log on to Facebook. But then I put that aside for clients, and then I use Facebook for them or get someone else on the team. Instagram location and hashtag stories, Pinterest autoplay video ads, and new Twitter direct messaging cards. So if all of that sounds like jargon, hang out on this site, read these articles, it'll start to make sense. Take the class, try it yourself. A lot of us already have a social network most likely that we use. We can then turn it around and use it for professional purposes. You have search on the top as well. Search categories. Let's say Periscope. That's another social network, how your business can benefit from live video. So if you haven't heard of Periscope, it's a live video. It's a live video network. Basically, you turn on your uh, you, you turn on the app, you go live, and you're showing your customers live something. <coughs> what you show in all of that, read one of the articles or take the class. But Facebook has, has activated that as well. And YouTube, Periscope was the big name in that space, live video. And then YouTube has a version of it, Facebook has a version of it, and there's other competitors. Here I'm trying to look at an article, I get a pop-up and it says get your free copy of the marketing report. So I haven't closed this yet to show you this. You see pop-ups all the time and people close it quickly. But notice how they're, they practice what they preach. This is a, about social media, this website is about social media and marketing and such. Look at how they wrote this. Yes, I want to improve. Or small, I don't want the latest research. It's simply not okay or cancel. It is more active. It is in marketing speak. Of course I want to improve. Let me click on that. I need my business to improve to make more sales or whatever. So they'll give you this industry report. 49 pages, 77 charts for free. They're going to ask you for your email. Join more than 600,000 of your peers. Again, more of that marketing speak that a lot of us don't have, but via more, you know, research and education, you can understand it better. I said, no, I don't want the latest research. So it explains what Periscope is. This is also an audio format. You can hear the article instead of read it. it tells you how to set it up, gives you ideas, strategies. <coughs> The secret to selling your business with one sentence, tie in emotions. Look at the commercials out there. The ones that you might remember or the cleverest ones are often about some sort of emotion. Love them or hate them, Apple has some of the most uh, effective marketing. And it shows because it's one of the most valuable companies in history, uh, market share wise. Uh, stock price, mind share wise, you know, everything's an iPad, even if it comes from Samsung. 
or a Microsoft One. Um, so uh, Apple does a very good job with their marketing. They're not really kind of o over the top showing you the phone. They're showing you the people, the lifestyle, the birthday party, the party at the beach with people taking photos on their iPhone or using the their Apple Watch for for the event and such. Contrasting like with Samsung, I, I saw the uh, one for their latest phone, the one that doesn't blow up. You can uh, take it underwater and take photos and now the screen is bigger than ever and you can capture more of the underwater wildlife but still the phone is like really front and center literally on that on that commercial non-stop. You're seeing through the phone to see underwater. Um, so marketing, you need to invest in it. And it could be the investment of your time and effort, or it could be a literal investment in paying for your Facebook to reach more people, your Instagram to reach the right people. And you could start pretty low. You know, a dollar at a time and such. How to run an Instagram story takeover. 2017 Social Media Marketing Industry Report. This is one website I like to mention for people to educate themselves about social media and marketing. Uh, here's another one, searchengineland.com. Focus on SEO search engines. So here's another one with articles very often about these topics and all aspects of the industry. So even if you're using YouTube, you have to think about how to optimize your content on YouTube videos there's some statistic that like um, you know YouTube users upload like 20 hours of video every second some very crazy stat like that so with so much content YouTube is like the second or third most popular website in the world how am I gonna stand out well first I need to know how to make a video how YouTube works and all of that I cover YouTube for two days on the social media class that I'm gonna teach in the summer but here then if you want to get a jump start on that uh, class, you can see this sort of article about how do I figure out what are the keywords for my for my videos? What are people searching for that can help me find get, get me found? How to glean keyword insights from your competitors. So checking what's working for the competition can help you to then stand out. So those are a couple of websites that I would recommend people check out regarding social media and, and SEO. It still comes back to your content. Let's say you create a Twitter account for your business and a Snapchat. Let's say you create them all. That of course does not mean you're going to get traffic. You need to then use them and be active and such. So we'll take a break. And, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the um, content creation and such. It's 7 o'clock. We'll be back at 7.10.